Hey, I'm Dr. Hannah Hamlin. I am a physician and a person living with type 1 diabetes. I'm going to talk to you today about the Dexcom Stello. I had the opportunity to wear one and just found that there were a lot of differences compared to other CGMs on the market. So today we're going to cover five things that I learned from that experience and how I think it can relate specifically to someone living with type 1 diabetes. So what makes the Dexcom Stello so different and I think kind of revolutionary in this field is is that it is the very first continuous glucose monitor on the market in the United States that you do not have to have a prescription for. So you can actually go to your local pharmacy and request it over the counter. This is great because often, uh, as you know, sometimes we have supply issues or we don't get our, our refill prescription in time. I think that that's a nice option. The thing is, the way that you use the Stello is very different than the Dexcom G6 and G7. So today's video is gonna be comparing the differences so you can understand what to expect, what it does and doesn't do. So the first thing that makes the Stello different is that when you have the Stello app on your phone, so it's a completely different app that you would use, you will see that the data comes in in 15 minute increments, as opposed to the Dexcom G6 and 7 that come in in five minute increments. Now the 15 minute increments, I was a little bit nervous about that. I thought, meh, I don't know. I kind of think I would want to know about my blood sugar more frequently. But what it does do is it shows you those three dots on the page. So you're not losing data necessarily. It's just not uploading that data every five minutes. Instead, it's, it's all coming in at the 15 minute mark. So for preventing loads or tracking those spikes, you're not gonna get as much data up up front. And I, I thought when I started using this, I thought maybe that's gonna be a problem. You know, maybe I will need more data or I'll want that data. I'll wanna know, you know, if that low's coming sooner. And I actually was shocked because I didn't find that to be a problem. Typically, if, if I'm already seeing a trend down or already seeing a trend up, I can kind of guess what's gonna come in the next 15 minute marker. And so I didn't find that a problem. I didn't find that it changed the way that I treated lows or predicted highs, which was helpful because I think that that was something I was concerned about and it ended up working out and really not changing my actionable steps or the timing that I chose to do them. So interesting. Second thing about the Dexcom Stello that makes it a little bit different is that it has no alarms. And this is really important to understand if you're going to use this. If you have been using G6, G7, or even a Freestyle Libre for a long time, you're used to those alarms. You're used to your blood sugar spiking and you hearing that alarm so that you know when to correct. You're used to kind of it catching those lows before they're coming and letting you know, you know when they happen. This doesn't do that. Now it does give you notifications if you're spiking. And I actually found that helpful because it would give me a notification if I was 115 and it started to see a, an upward trend. I typically like to do my corrections for high blood sugars earlier than when I get high, but as I see them coming. And so that worked out better for me. I did have to set more alarms at night, obviously, because I wasn't I wasn't wearing a, a CGM at the same time with an alarm. And so I did wake up to check on it, make sure I was doing okay preventing lows throughout the night. So that was a big difference. If you go back from using a regular CGM to the Stello, I think going back to the rules that you used for yourself when you were on finger pricks only is helpful because that'll allow you to make sure that you're catching any highs or lows that it doesn't catch. Now, not necessarily needing to do the finger pricks, but using the rules for timing of when you would to look at it, if that makes sense. So that's a big one. I also was a little bit nervous about not having the alarms because I've been so used to that for so long and didn't find that it made a massive difference for me. Now, I think this one is more personal. I can feel my lows and my spikes well. I've learned to do that over time. I've had support with that from other people kind of teaching me how to, but if I am 80 and dropping, I know it before I look at my sensor most of the time. And if I am 160 and spiking, I usually know it before I look at it. And so with that, I think that for me, it worked out well. I had those timing, you know, when to look at it, kind of structure in place, that I used back during finger prick. I didn't have any problems with lows that I wasn't able to catch. I, th I can think of maybe one that caught me a little bit off guard in the morning when I was first waking up. But otherwise, you know, throughout the time of using the sensor, it worked out well. So that was nice for me. And I think that it's something to consider if you are a person that doesn't feel lows or if you are a person that doesn't feel when you're high and you wouldn't know to kind of think to look at it and, and have that correction may not be the best fit. And certainly, I would say if you are a person with type 1 diabetes or a person with type 2 diabetes even and you're on insulin, 
absolutely, if you can get a Dexcom G6 or a Dexcom G7, go that route um, because those alarms are really important for safety and so, so helpful. So that would always be preferred in this, this situation. But again, there are times where maybe our prescriptions fall through the cracks or insurance doesn't cover something. You know, we have more options. For what it's worth though, the Freestyle Libre, if you don't have insurance coverage, the Freestyle Libre does have a cash price if you have a prescription for it. Again, you would need the prescription. So just kind of something to think about there. The other thing that makes the the Dexcom Stello different and what I liked about it is that it has your data of the past built into that app. So currently with the Dexcom G6 and G7, you would have your regular Dexcom app and then you would have your Dexcom Clarity app. If you don't know about the Dexcom Clarity app and you're not using that, I highly, highly recommend it. It gives you a weekly overview of what happened that week, where your average blood sugar was. If you had any times where you were trending low or high that were at the same time every day where you could make adjustments preemptively for the future. That is helpful. You can set it up to email you once a week or you can just check the app as that report comes through. It's always creating that report for you live from your regular data from the, the Dexcom app, but logging in at least once a week and kind of trending that data has been so helpful for me with my diabetes management but the Dexcom Stello doesn't have that. Everything is built into one place. And I kind of like that because when I am checking my blood sugar and I open the app, I can see, oh, this was my average today. This was my average over the last seven days. This is my average blood sugar over the last 30 days. This is kind of where my trends are. And I kind of liked having that, the maybe the stimulus to look at that overall data more frequently. You know, I think it caught me uh, a little bit sooner, maybe when to change my basal rate. If I was saying like, oh man, I've been having a lot of lows, you know, I would see that just on that regular app. And so it allowed me to adjust things, which was really nice. So I love that about it. The other thing is that the Stella was really created for people with type two diabetes, not on insulin, people with prediabetes, and even for people with obesity who are really looking to understand what's going on with our blood sugars and learn from the trends. And so it also has kind of this whole back back end of information to teach you. So let's say you have a spike, you know that it came after a meal. There's a section you can click on and read an article about what types of foods are more likely to cause spikes. Now this doesn't translate exactly to someone on insulin and specifically not someone with type one diabetes on insulin, but it's helpful. It's still useful information. There is some overlap, although it's not exclusive. And so that's interesting and I think really nice for someone if they wanted to learn a little bit more about how food impacts their body or a little bit more about nutrition, how exercise can impact their body, hydration, etc. It's got a lot of educational material in the app where the blood sugar is. And I, I think that's really, really nice. And I think that people who do use that could get a lot of benefit from it. So those are the big differences as far as wearing the Dexcom Stello. It feels exactly to me like wearing the Dexcom G7. So that's helpful if you've you've seen those or worn those. It is darker and I've actually got it here. So this is the box that it comes in. The applicator to put it on is exactly like the Dexcom G7. And then you can see it here and this is my used one. So you can see it's just a darker color, but it looks almost exactly the same which is awesome. I would say, you know, one thing that is so important if you have type one diabetes um, and you end up using the Stello for some reason is to calibrate this thing. I did have a couple blood sugars that were significantly different than the graph that I saw. And by significantly, I mean, you know, would change the actionable step that I was going to do. I also noticed I had some compression lows with this, which was interesting. I typically wasn't getting those on the G6. So so that's kind of a different, I don't know if that is different than the G7 versus the Stello. I just happened to notice them more with this particular sensor. So something to think about, but I highly, highly recommend calibrating this once, if not twice, maybe even three times a day if you're noticing that there are some discrepancies in the blood sugar, because that's just going to be important, especially if you're making treatment decisions around insulin, you know, from the data, you want to make sure you've got that right. So I hope this is helpful for you. I found this a really fun experiment and also very interesting to not have the alarms. That was probably the biggest thing for me. And I can see that there may be a benefit and this would be something 100% to talk to with your provider about, but I can see that there may be a benefit if you're going through a little bit of diabetes burnout and you are so frustrated by the alarms that you're getting and you either 
always have them silenced or every time it comes up, you're just really frustrated and it's making you want to back off on the actions that you would typically, you know, need to do for your diabetes care, there might be a place for this, you know, is just not having those alarms. You're going to have to think about it, be a little bit more manual with things in your head, but you will have a break from alarms for the whole time you're using it, which is lovely. So I think that that could be a pro, but again, it would be highly specific and something to talk about with a provider. So I hope this was helpful. I really I like doing these videos. I'm hoping to put out more. If you like this, please let me know and please subscribe if you're interested in finding out more about diabetes technology, mindset with type 1 diabetes, and really just what a happy, healthy life can look like with type 1. That's my intention here. So thanks so much for sticking till the end.